Hey developers, welcome back to another video and I think it's a pretty important one, especially if you're a developer who plans to stay in the industry for the next 5, 10 or even 20 years. Well, the thing is our industry, especially the web development ecosystem, is changing rapidly. Just by looking at the state of JavaScript surveys from the previous years, you can see that the results are all different, which means that the JavaScript ecosystem and web development in general is changing year by year very fast. Which also means that if you don't adjust your knowledge or adapt to these changes, then you might find yourself not being able to get a job because the way you write applications five years down the road is completely different from what it is now. So for that, in this video, I'm not only gonna talk about the trends that I'm seeing, but also about things that I would suggest you to learn or at least take a look into or at least even consider because these things are also things that I'm going to do this year myself on my side. So without further ado, first thing on the list is the application rendering patterns. So all of you know that single page applications have been kind of revolutionary in the previous 10 years. Well, guess what? We are going backwards now. It kind of reminds me of what happened with the iPhone design. So imagine iPhone 5 kind of small and edgy, then iPhone 6, 7, 8, or I believe even 10 had kind of curvier shapes. So edges were not that defined. And now iPhone 12, I believe, 13, 14, we are going back to squares again. And the same thing is happening with applications. It's very funny. So the mainstream is being shifted from single page applications to the server side. And not only this, but now we are also seeing that with this huge focus to the server side, a new rendering patterns are starting to appear. Now, again, if you don't know the difference between server side and client side applications, I would suggest you to take a look at this video and I'm gonna also leave a link in the description. But basically, server side rendering is not a solution for everything. It's a solution for news websites and sites that can be statically generated pretty well, but more interactive websites don't really work that well with the server side generation. So the second trend that I'm actually seeing is monorepo. Again, kind of a similar situation with the iPhone. We are used to have one big monolithic application, but then we came up with this idea that no, we should use microservice on the backend, for example. We should divide every service to each own domain and all of them are separate instances of, let's say, Node.js server running on different machines, right? Well, now we are still keeping this architecture, but when it comes to the code, where the code lives, we no longer separate those services into different repositories. We are going to use a monorepo. So basically, monorepos are the old good way of structuring your code. Although if you read more about monorepos, you're probably going to notice that they claim to be different from old good single repositories. Why? Because in a monorepo, you can put it in a bunch of applications and microservices and so on but they all have a different or a separate life cycle. Funny enough, Google, the biggest probably tech company, uses a monorepo with billions lines of code. Yes, they're using a solution called Bazel and apparently it's working pretty well for them. So take a look at the monorepos. What I could suggest is probably a turbo repo, quite popular, and maybe an X, check out an X as well, so that you are up to date with monorepo. Third one is TypeScript. Well, there are no competitors of TypeScript, but people are usually very, very satisfied with TypeScript and are planning to use it for the foreseeable future. I would say forever, well, maybe at least 10 years. And an interesting thing about TypeScript nowadays is that it doesn't only live on the front end. Nowadays, it also lives on the back end, but also in all the intermediaries. You can use TypeScript for your unit test, you can use TypeScript for your ETV test, and you can use TypeScript for your Node.js server. And there's the cherry on top. You can also use TypeScript for your protocols of communicating with your server if you're on the client. So check out thing called TRPC. It's basically an API, like something like gRPC, but TRPC, which defines a schema for your server. Server can emit the schema for your client that your client can use to make sure that this is the schema that I'm going to use to talk to my backend and there is no mistake that I can make because this is a predefined schema. And nowadays you can use it with TypeScript. Another thing is serverless. All of you know that serverless has been this big thing recently and you have AWS Lambda functions which are quite cost effective because they only fire once and then they shut down. But we realized the problem that whenever you're dealing with databases from uh, Lambda functions, you can 
cannot open too many pool connection, all right? So let's say you have a Lambda function for every endpoint that you have on your server. So you have, let's say 300 of them. And what if all of them create a new connection to your database? So we realized why not make our databases serverless as well? And nowadays there are a lot of solutions for bringing your serv serverless databases closer to you through the users as well on the edge. So basically databases like PlanetScale that works on top of MySQL or Neon that works on, on top of the Postgres bring a lot of features that you can use together with the serverless functions. For example, branching, schema diffing, and basically a lot of analytics and insights that you might get. Okay, before I get to the final point, which is, I believe, the biggest point, to be honest, I also want to mention the fact that there are smaller things that are also coming up when it comes to CSS. For example, uh, Tailwind is becoming big, meaning uh, you don't have that much of styled components anymore. So it's more like Tailwind. You also have Tauri for uh, desktop applications. So Electron is still popular, but Tauri is also catching up. And when it comes to build tools, things like Vite, which sits on, on top of ESLint and ESLint itself are getting more and more popular while Webpack is kind of, has kind of stagnated. All right, and the biggest point that I can even imagine, I'm pretty sure you're all aware aware of it, but probably don't pay too much attention and don't consider it, is the fact that AI is becoming a pretty big thing. So you need to adjust to this and make sure that you don't only use ChatGPT and use it for things that you want to automate, that you're not only aware of GitHub Copilot and so on, although I would actually suggest using GitHub, but it's crazy. I use it and you can also watch my videos that I made about it it really increases your productivity three times. For example, it doesn't only help it with the code that you're writing, it doesn't only auto-complete it, but it also kind of reads your mind. And even if you are dealing with config files, like something in Webpack, and you don't know like which option to put there to enable something, you don't have to go to the documentation. You just write a comment, ask GitHub Copilot, and it spits out the code exactly as you want. But what I also wanted to say is, even if you're a JavaScript developer and you are primarily about the web, please check about machine learning. And even if you don't like math, there are simple courses that explain machine learning in a simple way without any prior statistics or math knowledge. Please check it out. I believe that AI is going to become really big in probably the next 10 years. And there is a chance that pure web development without any AI knowledge can become less valuable, which leads to less salary for you, right? You don't want to do that. You want to be a T-shaped engineer. So deep in one segment or in one area, of your specialization, but also branch out into different, for example, AI and data science. I hope you enjoyed this episode and please check out all the links that I put in the description so that you know where to go, what to read and so on. And I'm gonna see you in the next video.